good time to be a bricky. Well, we're a week into autumn and it's still 37 degrees out there, so I don't know if it's that good a time, but it's a very profitable time for a very illegal reason. It turns out some of WA's brickies got sick of this pesky thing called competition and a bunch of them tried to fix their prices. They formed a bricky cartel, had their own Facebook page where they'd discuss what prices to charge and which builders were paying what. What was the price? Well, before we go there, we'll, let's put some context in place. In the last building boom, that was 2012-13, brickies were getting paid about a buck eighty a brick. At a pinch, if you needed to get a job done fast, you might pay $2 and that was considered off the Richter scale expensive. Then it settled down and for a period dropped below a dollar to 90 cents. That was very low. When COVID came to Australia, they were getting about $1.20 a brick. Then things went mental because the state and federal stimulus grants gave us 40 odd grand to build a house. Perfect opportunity to cash in. And that's when the Brickies formed their little price fixing club. There are about 1,000 brick lane teams in Perth. Not all of them were involved in this little scam. They had the goal of $3. And they did it. That's the price for laying one maxi. That's the big one. The average brickie can lay 400 of those a day. Wow, six grand a week. That's more than a radiologist. It's almost as much as Mark McGowan. Although radiologists and premiers don't have arthritis in their shoulders by the age of 50, so it comes at a cost. Now, for a standard brick, which is smaller, the price is between $2.20 and $2.50. And brickies can lay 800 of those in a shift. That's what the big building companies are getting charged. If you're an owner builder who really wants your McMansion now, you'll have to offer $3.50 per maxi and $3 per standard for a bricky to even think about your job. And if you want a job done in the country, the Master Builders Association reckons you'll pay $4.80 a brick plus GST. You know what? You should swap that clipboard for a trowel. No. Gingers don't last in the sun. Someone blew the whistle and tipped off the ACCC. This is what the competition watchdog said. For a period of time in 2020-21, the ACCC looked into a number of posts and comments between bricklayers in Western Australia on a private Facebook group. The ACCC decided not to prosecute and opted for an education campaign instead. Honey, we can do this the easy way or the hard way. That ACCC intervention coincided with the absolute peak of the bricky boom. People were waiting a long time for their houses. Late last year, one of WA's biggest builders had 350 slabs down waiting for brickies to arrive. Now, there are a bit over 200 slabs now, so the heat's coming out of the market. The time from the slab going down to bricks going up was 10 months. But by the middle of the year, it should be back to the long-term average of about six weeks. Back when brickies were scratching around for work and only getting 90 cents a brick, that period could be as little as seven days. If only the ACCC could rein in fuel companies. Good luck. Fuel price cycles pushing up to two bucks a litre. F*** you, Putin. There's a cartel worth investigating. So what trades in demand next? Roof carpenters. Chippy, 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 chippy. Chippies charge per square metre. Before the building bonuses came in, it was about 20 bucks a square, had dropped as low as 16. It's currently sitting at 34. And after the carpenters come ceiling fixers, plasterers, tilers, and all the other finishing trades. Prices for them aren't going to go up as much, most probably, because their busy periods coinciding with the opening of the WA border. So tradies from over east will be coming in to even up supply and demand. Hell's Angels artwork is in demand. The Hell's Angel Outlaw Motorcycle Club is in a dispute with online retailer Redbubble, which is selling novelty items bearing the gang's logo. Now, normally bikey gangs settle their disputes this way. Or this way. We both knew when it come to this. But in the trademark dispute, the Hells Angels have lawyered up. Last year, the bikies took Redbubble to the Australian Federal Court, saying there had been seven instances where Hells Angels artwork featured on the site in 2020. Said artwork could be used for printing on T-shirts or bike helmets or bumper stickers or whatever you wanted. Redbubble's lawyers claim the retailer is free to do this because of an agreement the gang signed with another company called T Public. T Public, which had also been selling Hells Angels artwork, was taken to court by the gang's American chapters. 
The upshot of that was Tea Public gave the gang $1,500 and the gang agreed not to sue Tea Public or do this. Redbubble, which is an Australian company, bought Tea Public in 2018 and says the American agreement covers it. So they can't sue. Well, that was Redbubble's argument. But Federal Court Justice Andrew Greenwood has just said the argument is wrong which means the Hells Angels are free to sue to stop them showing the gang logo. But it's illegal to... To show outlaw bikey gang patches and other insignia. Yes, in WA and I think in Queensland as well. So if you live in one of those states and go on Redbubble to put the skull and wings on your COVID face mask, you could be in breach of the display prohibited insignia of an identified organisation in a public place legislation and face a $12,000 fine. Doesn't matter what you put on your face mask, people hate them. And now being blamed for the death of the CBD. Move over, meth zombies. 61% of city workers say they're not coming back to their office towers because they don't want to mask up. This is upsetting property managers, retailers and the city of Perth, who say the life is being sucked out of the city. They just cannot understand why someone would rather sit at home in their tracky dacks when they could spend an hour in peak hour traffic and then pay 25 bucks a day in parking. And it's good to get out of the house sometimes. True. And you can't beat Perth's cosmopolitan dining options, street theatre... You only need DC or what? ..and other forms of live entertainment, and the many fashion boutiques. The Property Council reckons we should be following the lead of the eastern states, who are on the other side of this thing. COVID's only just taken off here, close to 2,900 new cases Tuesday and 14,500 in total. Are we really surprised that people don't want to get crammed onto a bus or a train or into a lift when we're about to hit the worst part of the pandemic? Next stop, F*** that. I'm Ben Harvey. For more up late, click the subscribe button below.